Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. I got a new camera. Oh, and of course, it's not going to work. What the fuck? Why wouldn't it? Ah, uh, it was working a minute ago. I'm going to keep trying because it's important. We got a cat cam. Beans will be over here below the chat. What a stupid diversion that was. What do you want to do today? Kind of like my guitar skills. It was working a minute ago. Love it. Reaper news. There was a Reaper update. Mostly bug fixes. 99% bug fixes. That's about it. There was one thing that people were pretty happy about. So let's check that out. That camera is actually too big. If you make videos in Reaper, you might like the, uh, the show video full screen option. So view video. And then there's an action. Okay, well, first of all, you need to choose which monitor it goes to full screen. But then there is an action video full screen. So this can now be set to an action. You can run that and it makes your video window full screen. You still have to double click or right click full screen. Now you can put this on an action. I don't have an idea of what's a good action for that. I'm going to use this uh, forward slash. So, yeah. The other thing maybe you notice here is in my, my custom toolbar, I've made some changes. I used to have a lot of separators and I switched that to this new, well, not new way, but a different way. Instead of having a separator between different elements, I use this no op, no action, action. Um, I rename it so that there's a dash there just because it's like, if you put in a separator, it's clearly a separator within the, um, the menu. But this one is a little different. I assign a, a different icon to it and I made a couple dividers different shape dividers. So there's one that is um, two lines on the sides. I've got a, a like a forward diagonal line, a backwards diagonal line, and then a divider in the middle. And so I'm using the, divi the middle divider option for these different things in my toolbar. Kind of categorizes things in a different way. I shared these on the Discord in the theme section. If you want to grab those icons, customize them yourself or anything, you can get those on the Discord. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's subtly different. You can see the difference between regular separators here and uh, my custom separators. You can't really change this highlighting when you hover over it. This toolbar is now a little bit more compact, just slightly more compact, and I still am able to sort these different actions into different tasks because sometimes they, they kind of blend all together. It's hard to see. So I've got like... Things involving takes here, things involving the the appearance of items, some editing tools. Some of these, I, I even forget what they are. I could probably get, remove this one. Uh, but these are some of my video editing tools. I hate a mixer, monitoring effects chain, the grid. And over here are some various sound design tools, gluing, rendering items, normalizing. Preserving pitch in stretched items, things like that. One of my favorite free synths is OBXD, and it was just updated to version 3. They added a bunch of more features that aren't possible on the original hardware. And instead of explaining all these features to you, I want to recommend a video from Alex, Vulture Culture, uh, who is a big supporter of the channel as well. He, on his channel, Vulture, Vulture Culture, he's just done a uh, an overview of all the new features in obxd version 3 so you can see like the invert filter option uh, logarithmic or linear switch for the filter envelope or the amplifier envelope um, a more resonant um, filter multi-mode filter there's lots of little features that uh, make it both easier to use and expand the capabilities of the synth it's a great sounding synth uh, based on the uh, on oberheim synths and it, it's cool that it's not only like faithful to the sound of the original hardware, it, it goes beyond the capabilities of it and it's free. I will link you to that in the chat right now. 
Yeah, so you want to do a Q&A? Uh, Chris Butler is asking, I want to ref refer a new Reaper user to good starting video playlist. Is your Fresh Start still relevant? I would imagine it would still be, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Fresh Start series was only made, I think, last year. Maybe it was the year before. Yeah, it's it's pretty much still relevant. The only things that have changed are the, the auto backup settings have changed. They've added a lot of things that are maybe better or just equivalently good options now. But if you set it to the exact same settings, it would be fine. Why can't Reaper see a MIDI device that has already been discovered? It says not present in red. Could be USB bandwidth. It could be that uh, your computer uh, shut it off due to inactivity. Power issues are common. Maybe some other device is already using it or some other software is already using it. But uh, generally, if I'm in my... Uh, all my MIDI controllers are off right now, except for one. So if I go to Preferences, Audio, MIDI Devices, you can see some are set as not found or not present. So if I turn it on again, it may it may pop up right away, but I might have to close this window and come back to it. Polity is still saying not found. If Reaper can't use one of my MIDI devices, I simply hit reset devices. It works for me. Not sh sure why Reaper can't use them, but it's a pretty easy fix. Often it's like the the device is turned off when you start Reaper. And usually the the thing that I do here, just come into this window and then close the window. Usually gets them working again. There is this reset action here, which sometimes works. And there is in the action list, there's this reset all MIDI devices, reset control surfaces. Uh, yeah, we'll just hit this reset all. And make a new track is, uh, let's see Fury 800. It, oh, it, it's literally not even plugged in. That's <laughs> That's why it's not working today. Plugging in the USB cable is important as well. And that's why mine was not working. So let's try that again. It still didn't work. <laughs> I mean, it's possible the other end of the cable isn't connected either. Nope. This is perfect. Plug in both ends of the USB cable for best results. All right, so it's plugged in, it's turned on. Now it's working. Okay, next question. What is the best way to have a track automatically armed upon selection? I know that a new track can be automatically armed, but can you do this just by selecting an existing track? Yeah, actually, there is a built-in function for this. So if you right-click on a track, and you go to automatic record arm when track selected. If I make a new track, there's only one track armed at a time. I've got a, a customization to make it turn red when it's uh, armed, but I think that just helps you see which tracks are, are armed here. And if you want to, you just shift click. Once you enable it, it enables that for that track and then the next tracks you make but you can disable it for certain tracks. So if I do this, select two tracks, disarm. Now they're fine. If I make a new track, it's not. Possibly a little confusing, but yeah, if you just make a track, set it to auto arm, it should do that for any new tracks you make after that. Is there a way to record with just space, not using control R? Uh, you wouldn't really want space bar to be record for every time like replacing play would be probably a bad idea but i do use the shortcut uh control space for record i do recommend using that i use that a lot i do almost every day i go to record and i use that i do accidentally press command spacebar which is spotlight search for me but yeah, control space, I would recommend that. But spacebar on its own, I think losing um, transport play would be a bad idea. 
Is there a way to select everything to the right or left of the cursor without having to drag and scroll through the whole project? Selecting everything to the right or left. Let me take a look. Selecting everything to the right might have a... There might be a reason to do that. But, okay, when someone asks me a question like this, I think I want to know what the end goal is, usually, because sometimes they're going about a thing in a way that doesn't achieve the end goal. So let's say we have a bunch of items here and your cursor's here. You want to select all of these for the purpose of what? Making space in the project or um, inserting a different item in there or something like that. So if it's the task of creating space, like let's say this much space and make a time selection, Right-click within that time selection and insert empty space in selection, right? So we didn't need to select the items at all, but the job was done. So let's undo that. Another way of approaching this, we could go to uh, ripple edit all mode, grab any of the items at the beginning of that, that selection and move that over. So we didn't need to select any more than one item and it's still created space for us. But to be more specific of, of what you want to do, let's search the action list. Select all right. Um, add all items right to the selected items to item selection. Okay, so we select the first item and then click, click run. And that only does the select a track. So we could select all and then run that. Now that does seem to do the select a track. Add all items on the right of edit cursor to selection. That seems to work. Okay. So we're going to look for a PPP left. Add all items on the left of the edit cursor to selection. And that seems to work as well. So with that, we can cut and then move over here and, and paste. I also want to show you the shortcut. If you double click on the track control panel in an empty space, it select all items on that track. I find that to be really useful. So if I just wanted to select everything on the right of my edit cursor, I could just deselect one of those items on the track in this situation. Ripple edit is dangerous, and that's why I I use this this function to uh, highlight the the ruler. That is um, change transport theme element background color according to Ripple state. It's one of Xframe's actions or uh, scripts that are in Repack. Um, you can even by editing change the colors here. I like these colors. I think I think they work fine except for when there's markers. Um, if you don't change your default marker color, maybe kind of hard to see. If you have things that you need to keep in sync, um, ripple edit single track mode is like pretty dangerous if you don't like group your items first. So I group these items and then I can do ripple edit single track and they keep together. But the great thing about ripple edit all tracks is that if you have markers or regions, um, ripple edit all will also move those. It also does uh, tempo envelopes and stuff like that too. I'm usually just toggling ripple edit off or all mode. And I also have a shortcut that temporarily sets it as I drag. So I'm pressing control alt drag and it turns on ripple edit as I'm dragging. I'm using this a ton in my video edits, podcast edits and stuff. So I'll show you the mouse modifier for that. Media item left drag and then ripple edit all tracks. There's a little bit of a delay between the um, the region color or the, the ruler color coming on, but it's still helpful. Question from Amelia. John, I'm trying to remap a control surface but its default parameters keep conflicting with relearn. 
any way to bypass the controller's default functions. Uh, that controller's got to have some sort of software to do that. So if it's Arturia, there's the uh, MIDI control center, I think it's called. I'm not sure about Novation. Novation had AutoMap, but I don't know what they're using currently. There may be different uh, different mode or, or mapping that you can use as your starting point. And I guess make sure that that controller is, isn't enabled as a control surface as well. Software only has a few buttons that can be remapped internally. And make sure like in Reaper, in the action list, that there's not MIDI stuff here, like, like this one. I don't remember assigning this, MIDI channel 1, note 84. But that's the sort of thing that you might need to, uh, to look out for in your action list. So I'm just going to delete that. If you sort by shortcut, um, these are everyth everything that has something assigned will be here, and you can kind of go through this fairly quickly and see if there's something assigned to a MIDI note or a CC. There's a possibility that you assigned something and forgot about it. So Reaper shouldn't respond to any MIDI commands unless it's set up as a control surface or unless you assigned it in the action list. Can you show me how to enable the control controller but not have it functioning as a surface? Okay, well, there are different sections of the of uh, Reaper's preferences. So MIDI devices, if you enable something for control, then it's allowed to control plugins, uh, assign things to the action list. For input, it shows up as an input on a track. You do need it to be enabled as a... I want to say you do need it enabled as an input to work with relearn, but I would have to actually check. And then for the control surfaces part, if you haven't enabled it here under Control OSC Web, Reaper should not be responding to anything from it. Let me just verify here that in MIDI devices, my Focusrite Control XL, I'm going to disable that except for Control. I go to Add Relearn. And if I, I don't know. Actually, let's let's just use the learn, learn source. No, learn target. <laughs> uh, my my controller is set up for for a different app, and it does that sound. <laughs> Unintentional. Um, I think it needs it needs to be record armed and uh, learn source. No. Nope. Learn target. No, I think it does need to be assigned as an input. So the. Control XL needs to be on input for it to work, I think. So it should be here. Launch control. Yeah. Yeah, so it needs to be a, as, as an input. I th there might be another way to do it using the uh, input now, but it's it's been a while since I've looked at, at the, at relearn. Every time I need to relearn it. But I did plan on making a video about it at one point, and I got pretty close to hitting record, but I've since forgotten everything I knew about it. Gunshots. Not exactly gunshots. So you disabled in MIDI devices, but enabled in the control surface area. I would enable it as MIDI device, disable it in control surface. Um, I think it needs, it can't be a control surface for, um, I might be wrong. Yeah, um, so like my, my X-Touch is enabled as a control surface, um, but Relearn, I don't think Relearn has access to it. So anything that is, um, 
enable for input is shown here. Although let's let's just double check this. Control only and what does relearn see? It does seem to, to see it fine that way. Yeah. Okay. So if you select it from the input here, you can assign it, even if it's not um, record-armed. I forgot about that. Almost always, the device won't be able to be used as a controller, like a control surface in here, at the same time as it's used as a MIDI device here. So like my X-Touch, I have it disabled in the MIDI section because I'm using it with Control Surface Integrator. But with other control maps, you do enable it here, but not in the other thing. Usually don't do both. Sometimes you do. I think it did work with the default setup uh, with either for certain custom functions. But yeah, then I, I wouldn't have any way of overriding any of the default settings. Default action modifier for select items is right drag. How can we change it to left? Let me think. I think you mean for like a range view. Yeah, there's the option. You only have the options of right drag, middle drag, middle click here. But there are the arrange view overrides and that is assigned to left click. So let's say marquee... Uh, marquee select items at time. My default is the right, right drag. I like it like that. But in the main toolbar, this is the default Reaper 7 main toolbar. You can enable this, just left click on that, and then you can select items with a marquee select without also setting time selection. But if you wanted to change that behavior, you can also set that up here. Arrange view override A is marquee select items. Adding shift uh, adds an item to the time selection. Option or alt on Windows would also set the time selection. Option marquee select sets... Oh, wait, that was off. Marquee select with option is like my default right drag. If I press shift, I can add these to the selection. Press escape. Yeah. Maybe one of you guys could help me with this. There is... With Razor Edits, if I've got this set up and I want to move this, I want like this, this, uh, this flat area at the lower level to be shifted over some some distance if i do this at a certain point this comes back i'm not sure how to fix that so far i've been just doing little movements just to to overwrite that i don't know maybe i'm just approaching it the wrong way that's like the remaining razor edit thing i don't understand i should set up add to razor edit because that's that is yeah shift wait not ignoring snap i want to be able to make two razor edits Is there a way to make the recent projects list use paths relative to the Reaper directory? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that the recent projects list uses an explicit path for every um, every project. Because if you if you move a project, it breaks the the connection here. I don't have a solution for that. There should be a setting in mouse modifiers for left drag to just move the data. Looks like it's copying when you move it's it's not copying the the razor edit's not copying that it is moving it but 
I don't know. It's it's like trimming it. But not Like this is weird. I don't think this is really like a bug, but that that's a weird behavior that you probably wouldn't want. Yeah, it's like keeping the original um, envelope points there uh, until you let go. A little odd. I can deal with it. I just sometimes get confused by that. I could highlight the envelope point on multiple tracks at once and move them all up or down at the same time without having to go through any complicated machinations. Yeah, so multiple envelopes is only possible with, um, let's just do pan and volume, uh, using razor edit. So we can use this shortcut in the main toolbar, do that. And so if we want to trim it, we can do them both there, but without razor edit, it's really not possible. No, oh, I'm, I'm already so used to doing razor edit. So it's not possible to select more than one envelope lane at a time. So razor edits is really the only way to do it. And if we're doing multiple tracks, we could do, uh, let's just use the tool. So I've got uh, volume on this track and pan on this track and we can trim them at the same time. So different types of envelopes, but even across tracks, it's still possible only with razor edits. Hopefully that's not still too complicated. Somebody suggested with razor edits to also set the time selection. And I've never tried that. So I'm going to try doing that now. So razor edit, set time selection. What if I add to it? Moves the edit cursor. I think I do like that more. Being able to set the time selection. I think at least the edit cursor should move. Sometimes I want to be able to like loop what I've selected to make sure it's a clean edit. I might actually add that to uh, set time selection as well. Behold, my stuff. I got this, uh, what is it? Sound Soother by Sharper Image. And this is probably from the 80s or 90s, I don't know. Uh, but it's like a, a sleep noise machine, and I ruined it. The first day I had it, I opened it up to see if I could circumvent it, and I I think I erased the, the sounds on it accidentally. So it no longer works. It was very cool <laughs> for a minute. Um, it, it came with a, a power cable, but it actually uses the same thing as like a pedal board. And it has a headphone out built in, so it doesn't need any modifications there. And it just makes all these different drone sounds. Some of them, like the uh, the foghorn, was pretty cool once you run it through some reverb. I'm kind of disappointed. At least it was very cheap. It was $5. Happy to pay $5, but it was half price day on electronics. So $250 to get a speaker. I'm so annoyed that I didn't even sample it to begin with, I really should have. On YouTube, you can find the sounds of it. Am I gonna get copyright claims for this? Honestly, I can't imagine like sleeping with the sound of foghorns. Like that's not like it reminds me of Siren Head. Uh if you've seen that uh that thing, but Yeah, the terrible recording quality here, but 
I think it's interesting. But that got me looking up on eBay. Um, the original, which I think is already sold. But th this looks like it's an actually an analog device to make the, uh, the noise. What do you think? If I can find one of these for 30 bucks, it seems like an analog noise generator. I think it's probably worth it. There's a whole bunch of different versions of them, but I, I imagine anything like newer than the one that I got is just going to be more uh, impossible to actually modify. Like there's a, a fairly large speaker in it. I was surprised at how big the speakers are. <laughs> Maybe sailors. Um, but honestly, it sounded very cool through the synth station. It, it was, it was nice. Try to get this other camera working here. I haven't used it today. It probably won't work first try. Oh my God, it worked. Oh yeah, you can see my t-shirt as well. It's just a Halloween themed soy boy. Um, anyways, the... Synth station has been rebuilt. The other day I was making some music over here and the shelf fell down because it it was so jank. I'm trying to be close to the mic, but it's uh, a little far away from me right now. So I rebuilt it stronger and now there's even more space. So I've got room for the Mug Mavis there as well. So Poly D, Mixer, Mavis, uh, Volca sample, and uh, RD6. I don't have enough channels on the mixer to get everything in there. I love the the thrill of the treasure hunt at the uh, at the thrift store. You never know what you're gonna get. The the webcam that I'm using up there for for Beans camera is um, was also bought for five dollars on half price day for two fifty. Even though the colors on it suck. It's been way more reliable than my like two hundred dollar webcam. I'm happy enough with it. I I've been using it for my uh, my Zoom calls this week. Uh, the shirt is from Internet Comment Etiquette, some YouTuber merch. Has anyone made music this week or used Reaper? Besides the stream edit, what did I do this week? Did some mixing. I didn't make any music for myself. Other than messing around with this. Well, maybe that's a lie. I'm, I may have actually worked on some music this week. I did a little... I did a synth gem. When did I post that? I posted something on the Discord this week, and I don't remember when that was. I forget what day that was, but I, I recorded some music. So that was made with the synth station, with the poly D for the melody, uh, using the sequencer, 
um, and then I'm playing different keys to transpose that. Then I blend in the RD6 and then the uh, Volca sample. I did mess around with that further with the, the Mavis, but then in setting that up, I knocked the shelf off the wall. So, <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was something that I worked on musically. I don't even know a day, 26th, sometime last week. Did you do anything with those samples? The samples from last week, I have, I don't think I touched them since. I just, I just <laughs> couldn't bear to work on them any further. But I will, I swear I will actually finish that and get them exported. But I have a lot of meetings this week and a mixing project and uh, the stream edit. I had to just like hunker down and, and get it all done in one day. That was three hours of recording and I got it the edit down to one hour. So a lot of stuff to cut out. How do you toggle track sizes and envelope lanes if possible? To work faster editing without dragging. Toggling envelopes, the defaults are V and P for um, showing pan envelope and volume envelope. I've added shift to mine because I'm already using I'm using V for for paste. So I just add, I just swapped it to shift V. So you can toggle them that way. But if you have other envelopes visible, I use the action shift A which toggles showing all of them. Um, and that action, find shortcut, shift A. Envelope toggle show all active envelopes for all tracks. I'm using this a ton uh, throughout my day. One button to show every envelope on every track and one button to hide it. And I usually have a button on my main toolbar as well. I, I swapped out my main toolbar earlier this week for some reason, I, f I forget why. I, I messed with it for some reason. I'm actually going to just import um, that one again. Luckily, I exported it first. So um, my envelope toggle is it just says show all on my main toolbar. And that's a function that I've been using a lot over the past, I don't know, five years or something. Now for changing track heights, I almost all I almost exclusively use command drag, command mess wheel to change track heights. I will like drag some or shift drag some. No. Shift option. Option drag. I I forget. One of them. And then lock it to a certain uh track height but other than that it's it's pretty much mouse wheel only that action is zoom vertically midi cc yeah track height is the same as vertical zoom in reaper toggle zoom to selected items is one way of doing it like to uh to quickly zoom into something and change the track height i don't tend to use that stuff too much but it's 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 been something that like I've used off and on. Like, I used to have something like I still have it assigned. I just don't use it that much. If I have something selected. I can press E. It makes the tracks a bit bigger, and then back to the previous view size. And that action is SWS toggle zoom to selected items or time selection. Oh, toggling sizes for envelopes. I don't know about that. Toggle vertical zoom selected envelope in media lane only. And, uh, zoom envelope. I might just be searching the wrong word. Save height of selected envelope slot one. That's probably... So we'll do slot one there. Slot two there and then apply yeah so there's your toggles not really toggles but toggle height of selected track envelope setting one setting two 
Yeah. So I guess you could edit this uh, to change the height here. So this is from uh, Mesopotamia toggle height of selected track envelope. It does seem to be like um, only one. You can only select one envelope at a time. The mouse wheel thing to change envelope or uh, track height also applies to um, the envelope lane below it. That's usually just what I do. I don't have like a great shortcut for that, I don't think. Oh, the lock, the lock function is very helpful. Um, it doesn't prevent... Uh, some people got mad about this. It doesn't prevent you manually dragging the height. It does prevent the mouse wheel thing. So in my all my video edit templates, projects where I'm editing video, I usually lock certain things like the B-roll track, the titles track, to certain heights. And then I'm adjusting the video track, the main video track, and the dialogue track, uh, depending on what I'm doing. By default, hitting one on the keyboard locates the play cursor to marker one, but only when the arrange window is focused. Can this be made global? Good question. I don't use that function, but um, let's do marker one. Let me just find this. So go to marker one. You would set set this to one and then set this to global scope. So not with text fields, you still want to be able to type. So, um, so I'll put a, put a marker there. I want that to be marker one. Okay. So I'm here. I press one goes there. A plugin window. Well, let's see. does the, does the mixer focus make a difference? And I have a plugin window open. I press one. No, press one. It seems to work. I'll take it off global. Try that again. Yeah, so I'm getting an error, mess, uh, error sound if a plugin window is in focus. But if I just change that to. Go to marker one and change that to global. Then it should work as long as this plugin isn't misbehaving. There's a an action to um, or a, a function to send all keyboard input to plugin, and that might prevent it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time, setting it to global will work. There's still certain plugins that will mess with it. Is there a way to have preset of zoom levels like Pro Tools? I do have some zoom presets. So if I press, no, wrong button. If I press six or seven or eight, those are zoom presets. These are scripts though. The built-in function for zoom presets is actually in the screen sets and layouts window under track views. Um, this saves this saves um, horizontal zoom, but track views is a per project setting. So you could save this into your default template, but I think it's better to use a, um, a script like this. So this one, uh, Cephillion helped me make this one, or I asked him to make it and <laughs> he made it for me. <laughs> Um, but it, it pads the start, um, the number of measures in view is one, and you could even make this to, um, you can make this a template. So it actually auto fills in the number that is in the, the title, but I think that was before we had figured that out. So I've got one for one measure, two measures and four measures. And for me, that's always fine. You see that there's a slight amount of, it slid over by, by a quarter note, I guess. Yeah, quarter note. So that you can still see what's before instead of directly aligned. 
but I'm sure that this is a, a function that ChatGPT could could make if you uh or just message me on Discord. Post on Discord, I'll share the scripts with you. I notice old scripts don't work anymore or I'm doing something wrong. Depends on the scripts. Some needed to be updated for um there's a new version of Lua that um that was implemented into Reaper 7 and a few things broke. Most of the stuff should work though. When you marquee select in toolbar, cannot move the items. Yeah, this marquee select uh, shortcut is only for selecting. So I'm assuming you're using this button to enable marquee selection. That corresponds to arrange view override A. And so you can marquee select items, but yeah, um, the marquee selection thing it is kind of weird it would be nice that if once the items were selected you could it would pass through to some of the other things like the media item thing i don't know why it doesn't the the way around that is to enable it through the keyboard shortcut so uh override a toggle a until release so if I run this, make my selection. Now it goes back to the regular edit tool. So that's one way you could do it. You literally just swap this button with this other action. So let's customize toolbar. Go to the override marquee select. Uh, right click, change action. Select and close, apply, close. Oh, I need to fix that icon. Uh, what was it? <laughs> this one, I think. Okay, so left click it once. Now it's armed, selected. And I can move. That's probably a better way to do it. It's it's really just made for people that um, you know, they're working on laptops and it's just hard to select items sometimes. If you only have one hand available, that sort of thing. They are somewhat customizable, but just with the marquee select one, you, you kind of have to um, disable it once you make the selection. I agree it's kind of weird. Not a fan of marquee zoom that goes full screen. Need to see other track above or below. Can't remember if I have a, a zoom tool. I thought I did. This one? Yeah, you could probably make something that's similar to that using scripting that just kind of pads the view a little bit. But usually when I do this, the zoom tool, I will do an undo zoom right after. Or not, well, when I'm done editing like that. There's SWS undo zoom. I find this one to be pretty helpful. Time, comp time expansion compression. Uh, you can do that by alt, uh, alt dragging on item edge. Yeah. So, um, yeah, time compression expansion, it's just stretching items and it, it's done by holding alt and dragging it by default it's going to snap to grid, but you can hold down shift and, and change that. I find anything past, like if you're stretching, you can go to about 0.75 before it really changes the sound of it. What is this sound? Weird. 
I don't know where that's, <laughs> that bass came from. What are these? I don't remember what those sounds were. <laughs> sounds like a drill near an amp. It may have been a drill. I just don't remember making them. Simon, you can also set up, like, actions to, um to set a uh, shrink to a certain amount or like half speed or double speed. Um, they're a bit obscure. Um, shrink is actually called compress. Time compress selected um, items by half is the one I tend to use. Um, I just realized you can also use it on envelope points. And so there's compress and there's also expand um, selected items by by two. Expand selected items by two is make it twice as long. I'm using those two a lot and I have them on my, my editing toolbar. So an option when in effects browser to see if some plugins are in custom folders, I find the browser lacks a bit of option to sort stuff out. I don't use the VST folders view. Maybe that's what you mean. Um, I was talking to somebody about this this week. I I think I set up my, my stuff up different than most other people. I don't use the auto-generated. I don't do the categories or developers. I just don't like how they look. I don't use the VST folders. I think these are all enabled by default on Windows, but I don't like them. And then the other thing was... So instead of just having the, the favorites list in folders, I make my own categories of different effects. And so I'm manually adding things to these most of the time. And then I've got my own um, generated, my, my own smart folders for different companies. And the process of making these folders manually um, helps me remember what I have and generally they work well so like baby audio for example it's a smart folder so baby audio not audio unit format and so i get only vst3 and vst3i in that folder um brain works it's like that devious machines or ursa dcp dsp are in this folder by using this, the filter, Devious or Ursa, pretty simple. Neither of instruments, not x86-64. Maybe I understand now. So like if you're in this view, the all plugins view, you can't see which ones haven't been sorted into folders already. Maybe that is something that would could be useful. As you add new plugins, they're only in the new category for a couple of days. Less than 24 hours, I think. And, uh, and it's easy to miss certain things. It would be kind of useful to see if there was, like, a, if it exists somewhere. It's it's easy to have a plugin in your, your all plugins folder that doesn't get put into any of your manually created folders, and you just don't uh, notice it. But I've got, like, uh, Spectral EQ from Tonstrom. I don't have a Tonstrom folder even though i have a few tonstrom effects select them add to folder there's no new folder option here there should be new folder would be cool make a smart folder tonstrom space not uh bracket x86 64 okay 
And there we go. Automatically created, and I can just drag this to where it belongs. There was a time when we couldn't drag to reorder the folders. It was such a pain. An automatically created, unsorted uh, folder might be cool. Is there a way to dock multiple effects windows from a single track side by side? I don't think so. You can dock the effects chain, but you can't dock individual effects windows. This makes me realize how how much behind I am on housekeeping. I mean, all of this stuff is optional. You don't have to do any of this stuff until it becomes a bottleneck for your workflow. When I was making the Mixing and Reaper series, every time I would make one of these videos, I'd be in the editing process and It'd make me realize how many things were slowing down the creative process in the mixing that are totally unrelated to um, the mixing process, like unrelated to getting good sounds and things like that. So things like searching for plugins, not having effects chains built already, not having track templates built already, not having my impulse responses organized, that's still a problem. <laughs> Um, not having like a, a mixing template that already has my three favorite reverbs in it already set up. Things like SWS autocolor to be able to uh, instantly identify different um, tracks based on their color, um, which are automatically assigned by their name. So when I start a mix, I can just go to insert track from template and... Uh, effects tracks. This is an old template, so this is probably not going to work too well. So, I've just got this effects bus, and it has a bunch of different reverbs in it that I like. Some lo-fi effects, some um, wideners, different delays. You know, one click to add that to the project. Pretty simple. And also from track template, I've got basic track folders. And so these are the tracks, the, the typical things you have in a project, drum bus, percussion bus, bass bus. You may not have them in every project. So like the last mix I had, had no keys. It had no percussion, um, but it had all these other things. Then as you bring things in, like, okay, this is my, my, my bass track, and that just goes in there. It actually speeds things up a lot by not having to make a track, name it, color it, maybe assign a different track layout to it, all those sorts of things. Those sorts of things I think are important in, to do. I don't know. Sometimes it's more fun than the actual work of, of doing the mix. I found the process of actually recording a mix from beginning to end and seeing all the different little time bottlenecks that are, or things that I stumbled on was very important. So I became more efficient in the mixing um, and I hopefully making better creative decisions each time I, I did it. You know, Joel Wanasek from uh, Nail the Mix and, and that stuff, he has a video course called speed mixing. I made the Reaper version of that for them. And so I was watching his course and I'd write down all the little things that he did in Cubase. And I did the Reaper version of those things. Um, so things like auto color, things like the templates, effects chains. Um, yeah, lots of little things like that. And you don't have to use all those little tricks because there's, there's often like, I don't know, four or five different ways to do different things. And, you know, thinking about your workflow, thinking about what you're constantly like struggling with, or, you know, if you're spending 15 seconds looking for an EQ, why not just make it one second with the EQ you use every time? So for me, re-EQ, I press the letter Q and I've got an EQ on that track. I never have to look for an EQ. I just select the track and press Q. I even have it set up so that if I have an, uh, an item and I press Q, that goes there. 
if I want to see the effects chain for a track, I can press the tilde key and that comes up whether there's things filled in it or not. Fast effects finder it can be useful. So it's just a search box for, for effects and your most recent things should be there. Yeah, Amelia, I like the modular workflow. Instead of having like a huge template, orchestral composition template that has 300 tracks, I find that to be overwhelming. I don't, I wouldn't know where to start with that sort of thing. So you could make a template that is just like your scratch tracks and you start with that. And then as you add strings, you add a template that has your, you know, the full stack of, of the strings and you can drag your MIDI into it. Segmenting the pre-production, post-production, uh, composing, mixing, all these different sections into different projects or different different days, not trying to do all of them simultaneously. That sort of helps with the the task switching uh, penalties you get, cognitive penalties. Been using Reaper since version one and, one and only started applying track coloring when John said he assigned the letter B to cycle. It helps quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's one little thing. So if it doesn't fit in the template, just hitting B, to assign a random color. It's, I almost never care what the color is, just that it's not the default. And so, yeah, B to, what is that? Track set to one random color. And then I think I've got shift B. Yeah, for item select, uh, set to one random color. So you can have the track set that color, shift B to set this to some other color. And that's super quick to make your verses and choruses and et cetera, different colors. That helps. Uh, used effects chain templates, but not track templates. I find that pretty helpful. Like the default templates for, um, for different instruments, like um, any of the contact instruments, all mine are still kind of broken. I think that this one should work. Every time there's a new contact version, it breaks all my templates. Come on, contact. I just updated you. You should be fine. There we go. So I didn't need to load contact, select from the browser, resize the window, uh, set up all the multi outs. It's all done here. I got a track for contact. I did. I don't have a way of automatically loading the the MIDI ma the note names yet. I might be able to do that by having an item in the project already. I might just do that. I'll just put in like a a three minute long item and then assign the note names. Okay, and then set this to this mode. Switch toolbar to MIDI one and my drum mode. There we go. I think that looks right. So I just select all these tracks, right click, save tracks as track, track template instruments. This is Kerpaloo contact seven multi and include items in the template. I make a new track and put in MIDI thing. It does do this, which I don't like, but that's fine. And if I insert that track from template, yeah, that seems to work. A lot of steps, but I don't need to do as many steps when I need to use it. I'm, I'm not a fan of labs. Uh, for all the reasons that uh, Aria may, uh, brought up in his video. Definitely watch that video if you haven't seen it. We should probably wrap up here now. Um, yeah, so we've been going for two hours almost. So thank you so much for joining the stream. Um, thanks for sending in all the questions today. Uh, I had a fun time talking about Reaper with you today. So hopefully you have a good weekend. And you uh, make some music, maybe practice guitar, keyboards. Check out your local thrift store and see if you can find some sound making thing. I want to see what you make next week.
Thank you for being here. Hit record this weekend. See you later.